So I'm a researcher here at VDMS, and today I'm here to talk about jump-starting back-office connections. So back-office can mean a few things. It can mean data centers, or it can mean points, or pops, or points of presence if you're a CDN. And the focus of my talk is need for speed. So as you can see here, speed is important in all aspects of life, even if you're a child or an adult. And for a CDN, it's our top priority. So we have around 90 pops in five different continents, and we serve tens of terabits of traffic. And when it comes to speed, we try to find every possible way to improve our performance. So let's. Uh, so the, top, the topic of my talk today is how can we improve the data transfer time between our pops? And so let's look at how we actually transfer data between our data centers. So what we do is we use this thing called persistent TCP connections between our data centers. And what that means is once you send some data, you don't close the connection. You reuse these connections. And using persistent TCP connections has two main benefits. Number one, you don't need to create a new connection. And what that means is you don't need to do a TCP handshake, which takes a significant amount of time. The other benefit is that when we use persistent connections, because they're open for so long, they have much higher bandwidth, because they have much larger congestion window sizes. Compare that to a new TCP connection, which has a smaller window, it takes a lot of time to grow. So for these reasons, we use persistent connections. We like them a lot, and we always want them to stay on forever. But like we also heard in the new Elix talk, that things don't last forever in life. So these persistent connections, even though we love them, they often close. It could be because of a server reload or an application reload that we close these connections. And you have to start them again. So we thought about this, that because we create so many TCP connections between, between our data centers, is there a way to optimize this? Can we improve the time it takes for us to create a new TCP connection and increase the bandwidth so that we can serve more traffic between data centers. Uh, so there are some things we can't avoid when you create a new connection. Basically, we cannot avoid a TCP handshake, which is part of the protocol. But is there something else we can do? Can we increase the initial congestion window size of new connections so that we can make them bigger right from the beginning? and we can send more traffic. So yes, we can do that. That's very simple. But can we do it in a way that's adaptive in nature, so that we can learn from the network around us and make the connections big enough to send good traffic, but at the same time not cause any new congestion? And if we can do it this way, can we do it on a CDN scale? So basically, that's what our team did we came up with a tool called Riptide. And what this tool does is it creates new TCP connections with a larger window size so that you can send more traffic in the single burst and you don't have to incur the penalty of a TCP slow start. Basically, we are jump-starting these new connections. The way Riptide works is that it looks at all the open connections to a given destination and groups them together. And it keeps track of them by keeping a moving average in memory. So every time you want to create a new connection to a given destination, you use this moving average to set the congestion size. And we are able to make these connections send more traffic right from the beginning. So we have been using Riptide for over a year on our CDN, and we have seen up to 30% performance improvement between our pop-to-pop -pop data transfers. So we like this tool a lot. It's a simple script that runs on user land, requires no kernel patching, low resources, and uses basic Linux commands like SS and IP to get and set these congestion window sizes. But like most of the projects we work on, this is a teamwork. So I would like to thank Marcel Flores, our intern who worked on this project. I would like to thank Amir, Derek, and Rob for helping us in designing and deploying this tool. We are also presenting this work in a conference next week in Japan. The conference is called ICDCS. The paper is available online, which has a lot more details and a lot more experimentation. I would encourage you all to have a look at it. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Kaz, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.